In this video, we're going to go over the difference between training the lats versus training the upper back. This is important as it's very easy to not understand how to bias the two different proportions of the back. Before we start, I want to mention that you are not isolating the lats or the upper back muscles, but you're just biasing them. It's like a scale, you tip it either way. The first thing that I think we should begin with is the muscles in the upper back. The main muscles in the upper back are the traps, the rhomboids, which has the rhomboids major and the rhomboids minor. These sit underneath the traps, the teres major, and you can also count the rear delts as upper back as it does similar roles. So how would you go about training the upper back? The first thing you'd want to do is make sure you have elbows out wide away from the torso, as most of the upper back fibers run more horizontal than vertical which means that the arm path needs to be more horizontal to the ground as these will run more in line with the upper back muscles. Second thing you'd want to do when training the upper back is have the elbows go past the torso and past the rib cage and reach full retraction so that the upper back muscles contract the most and fully shorten. The next thing you'd want to do to train upper back is have a neutral to a pronated grip as Normally, if you pronate, which is just putting your palm face down to the ground, this will force the humerus or upper arm out to the side a little bit more, which will naturally force a wider arm path, which can help bias the upper back muscles. You also want to have some upper spine extension. This is the thoracic spine, as this will allow you to get into full retraction, which can shorten the upper back muscles, and it will prevent you from going into full protraction as once you get into full protraction, the first little bit of the movement will be mainly lats. How to train the lat? You want the elbows to run close into the side, elbow into your hip, as the lats gain leverage when the arm is closer in, as the muscle fibers run more diagonally, so the lats will be biased. Try and keep a neutral spine as this will help to bias the lats. You don't want the elbow to go past the torso, as once the humerus is behind the rib cage, it has no leverage to move the weight as it can't actually shorten anymore as a fully shortened lat is when your elbow is behind your side. And I'm pretty sure if you keep on going further, the lat will actually begin to lengthen again. So stop it once it gets to your side. Keep more of a supinated grip. This is when your palm is facing up and you can hold something in it. As mentioned with the upper back, this will, instead of forcing the arm out, it will force it to come closer in. You want to allow the shoulder blade to fully protract on the eccentric portion as when the humerus is pulled forward the lat has a big leverage to depress it back down therefore the lat will be working to a greater degree. The next thing we should mention when training the lats is it is split up into three divisions. The thoracic which is the upper lat is biased more from neutral pulls to under 90 degree arm path pulls. The middle part of the lat is called the lumbar fibers. This is biased more from when your arm path is slightly above 90 degrees and you pull down into your hip. Then you have the lower lat, which is called iliac fibers, which is biased more from high to low pulls. So some exercises to train the upper back is exercises like T-bar rows, pull downs where your arms are wide, these are all great for targeting in the back as you have a wider arm path and will run more in line with the fibers of the upper back. If you want to make sure that you're targeting every area of the upper back, then I'd recommend you do some type of pull down where your arm is above. And then I'd recommend you do some type of row where your arm is lower down. As by doing this, you're gonna be able to hit it from different angles. And for the lats, you'd want something that would target all three divisions, as mentioned earlier. Some type of row, then you'd want some type of mid to low row, and then you'll want a high to low row or pull down. Another thing to mention when training the upper back or lats is what should you do with the scapula? In my opinion, you should just let it move naturally. However, when you're training the lat, make sure you allow it to go into full protraction as the lat is a very good depressor of the humerus. So if you allow it to go into pull protraction, the lat will get more stimulus. Then on the upper back, don't believe you want to go into full protraction. 
due to the lat having more leverage in stretch position than the upper back. So maybe you don't go into full protraction, although it's not probably a bad thing to do that. But you want to make sure you're getting full retraction of the scapula when you're doing upper back stuff. And then the lat, you just want to let it move naturally and stop when you get to your rib cage and don't go any further back as the lat has no leverage past the rib cage. Okay, so in summary, for the lats, you want a narrow arm path. For upper back, you'd want a wider arm path. For lats, you'd want a neutral to supinated grip. For upper back, you'd want a neutral to pronated grip. For lats, you want to keep a neutral spine. For upper back, you want some slight extension of the spine. For lats, you want the humerus or arm to stop at the rib cage and go no further. For the upper back, you want it to go back as far as possible and get into full retraction. For lats, you want to allow full protraction and get a deep stretch on the lat. For upper back, you want the scapula to move naturally and maybe avoid full protraction. That is everything we're going to cover in today's video. If you have any questions or queries you want me to answer, drop them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Let me know what type of videos you want to see as I'm happy to make whatever. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.